Please don't hate me. Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and today I'm here with a controversial topic. So if you've been around here before, you've probably seen some of my videos where I look at OfferUp, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, and sometimes when I'm on sites like that, I run into things like typewriter planters or typewriter lamps. And often I say something about how that's a cardinal sin. A lot of the people in the typewriter community do not appreciate things like typewriter printer, typewriter planters and typewriter lamps because they make typewriters that could have been salvageable into different things that are completely irreversible. Now I've tried making typewriter planters on this channel before in a way that was more ethical, and I decided this week to tackle another one of those cardinal sins, and that's the typewriter lamp. Now, as I was looking at typewriter lamps, I really do like the look of them. I know I'm not supposed to admit that, but I think they look awesome, but I wanted to find a way to do that that was not gonna hurt a typewriter and something that was maybe replaceable, reversible. So I tried to find different ways to make typewriter lamps, and I came up with two different ways to kind of approach this process one that's immediately reversible, replaceable, and one that's a little bit more permanent. So the first thing I did was I bought a lamp replacement kit on Amazon, because what else was I gonna do? Now, I got this light kit, and what it is, it has, it has replaceable parts for a broken lamp you might have at home. You can put it together and it turns it into just kind of a light socket that you can put a light bulb in. So I started by putting this together. Now, there was not a great instruction set for this. I kind of was going on my own. I did find a very helpful YouTube tutorial so I will link that down below, but the process of putting this lamp together was a little bit harrowing. Do not operate any electrical equipment that has exposed wires while it is plugged in. Do not put together a lamp replacement kit while it is plugged in. Bad things will happen. This is what electrocution looks like when you do not follow instructions. After that happened, I took a few days off of putting together the light kit, but eventually I did figure out how to properly put in the cardboard insert, which is the insulation part of the light bulb. I put that inside and that just protects all those live wires. I knew that it didn't, couldn't touch the base of the light bulb. I had tried it a couple different ways. I had wired it once and it worked. I had taken it apart to put the cardboard back in and that's when I got electrocuted and it didn't work. And then I took it apart one more time and I had to find a way to get the cardboard insert insulator in there in a way that it wasn't touching the base so that it could still have an electrical connection. That took me a few tries, but then I had that put together and I had to find a light bulb that was going to work for this process. I was looking at putting this typewriter lamp piece in the paper tray of a typewriter. So I knew I needed a longer light bulb, one that wasn't going to be like bulbous shaped so it could fit in that area. And I also knew I wanted one that was LED based because an incandescent bulb could get hot. LED bulbs last a really long time, they're more environmentally friendly, and they also don't get hot. And I didn't want a hot light bulb in there touching metal pieces and heating up the whole lamp. So I found this LED bulb, it was the right dimensions for a paper tray, and I put that into my new lamp kit, and voila, I now have a working light bulb. The next part of this process was figuring out how to do this in a way that was reversible and a way that was a little bit more permanent. So I took that light kit and I took my Smith Corona pacemaker from the 1950s. Now what's really cool about this typewriter, at least to me, is that it has a removable platen. You can take out the rubber part of this typewriter and you can do that on a lot of Smith Corona machines. You can take out the platen and now you've got this big open space in your typewriter where you can just sit stuff like a light bulb. So I took out the removable platen on my Smith Corona pacemaker and I just set in the light kit. And I was able to snake around the cord around the side of the machine, but that was a way that I could turn a perfectly good working typewriter into a typewriter lamp and it's replaceable. I can just take that light kit out of there and put the platen back in and now it's a typewriter again. And I think this solves some of the problems that people have with typewriter lamps because you can still have a perfectly good working machine and still have the aesthetics of a typewriter lamp. Now it's not super stable, it's just kind of resting in there. That's why it's important to have a properly grounded light kit and also have a light bulb that's not going to heat up and melt anything over time. You wouldn't want it touching things like rubber pieces, the rubber rollers underneath the paper tray. So be cautious about the products that you're using in this, but I do think that this is a way to have a typewriter lamp and a typewriter too. Now I also wanted to try doing this in a little bit more of a permanent fashion. So that's the like replaceable, easy to do step typewriter lamp part. 
There's probably a better way to say that, but I also wanted to do it in a way that was a little bit more permanent and then I could hang on the wall if I chose to. So I decided to look around my collection for a parts machine. Now I've talked about parts machines on this YouTube channel before. I have talked about my We Are Memory Keepers typewriter, a more modern typewriter, and I've turned that into a parts machine before. The big problem people have with typewriter lamps is that you're taking something that we no longer are making. We're no longer making typewriters and you're turning it into something where it can no longer be useful to collectors, repair people, anything like that. If you take a parts machine, a machine that you harvest parts off of, and turn that into a lamp, you can still take parts off of that. You're not worried about taking a machine apart that's already working. And I decided that was going to be the way to kind of fix this, how do I turn a typewriter into a lamp more permanently problem. So I looked around my collection for a parts machine. I didn't want to use my We Are Memory Keepers typewriter because I had taken most of the parts out of that already. But I did stumble upon this Skywriter from the 1950s that I had purchased at an estate sale for about $10 and realized it was too far gone once I got it home. It wasn't operating. A lot of the pieces inside of it were actually bent like it had been dropped. The case was broken, so I completely revamped the case. And you can check out that video down below as well. And the carriage return lever was missing different springs. So I turned that into a parts machine. I had posted it around different collector groups and maintenance groups on Facebook. And I was able to part out some of the pieces of this machine, including the carriage return lever, which went to England. The back plate went to a lovely lady who was fixing her Skywriter. I also had gotten rid of some of the platinum knob screws, one of the ribbon spools. So I had been parting out this machine for a little while and I fell upon it for my typewriter lamp project. So I decided to turn this Skywriter parts machine into a typewriter lamp. The first thing I did was completely clean the machine. I didn't want anything dirty on it if I was going to put something electrical inside of it. So I completely cleaned this machine. I was trying out a new cleaner this time. Instead of Simple Green, I was using LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner from the Dollar Tree because it says it cleans typewriters on it. So I had to try it. Here's a little bit of footage of that. The reason I picked this LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner is because on the list of things it says it can clean, it does say typewriter. Let's see. Here, under business, there are things you can try it on. Typewriters, adding machines, presses. So a lot of the things that we could be cleaning is typewriter repair tech. So I did want to try this. LA is totally awesome cleaner. I got it from the Dollar Tree. I'm noticing here some rubbing away of the logoing on the paper tray. Now I don't know if that was there before because this typewriter is pretty beat up or I did that by rubbing the cleaner into that section but we're gonna try it again here on this decal on the back of the machine to see if it wears away anything with the cleaner. And I let it sit for about 60 seconds 75 seconds and you can see here it actually smeared the decal on the back so now I'm going to be really careful around that. So I would not suggest this over any painted surfaces because clearly it eats away at the decals. Another thing I'm noticing besides that I really do not like the smell of this stuff like it's super chemically smelling and I know not everybody likes simple green but <laughs> the smell of even some of the other flavors of Simple Green is a little bit more palatable. This is definitely chemically smelling for like industrial cleaning, but it also I feel like is leaving a bit of a residue on some of the surfaces. Now this has had a second to dry, but it feels just like a little bit sticky. And it could be that this is a concentrate and that's why it's leaving a bit of a sticky residue, but I'm actually gonna go in with my dilution of the Lavender Simple Green just to go over some of those surfaces to hopefully fix the smell of the chemicals. Like I sprayed Simple Green on the foam parts inside the top and the bottom and let them sit outside. I'm gonna do that over the outside bits as well and hopefully get rid of some of that sticky residue on the outside. In honor of being fair, I also went and took a little bit of Simple Green Lavender on just a Q-tip and put it over the logo and you can see here too, it is also pulling some of that paint off. So it could be that just this logo is um, printed on top so it's a little bit easier to rub away but that is a concern just make sure you patch test before you use any of these cleaners over painted surfaces like this because you can see it'll rub away a little bit. After cleaning this project I did want to make sure I had removed anything that was flammable Obviously, I wasn't using a lamp that was going to heat up anything, and I hopefully had it grounded properly now, but I still just didn't want to chance it. So I took out 
the bottom plate of the typewriter with the side panels and the front top plate. And I took them outside, first of all, to let them sit in the sun for a little bit to get rid of the smell because it was a little bit stinky when I got it. But I also wanted to remove the felt inside of the typewriter. This is used for noise dampening. It really isn't necessary if I'm using it as a lamp and I didn't want something like felt, which is flammable, inside the typewriter if I was putting a lamp inside of it. So I let that sit in the sun, which melted the glue, and I was able to peel it off in pieces I also soaked it with Simple Green to help remove it and it took me a little while but I was able to finally remove all of the felt from inside the typewriter and then I brought those pieces back in and I put the typewriter back together. Now the next part of this process I actually did was I removed some of the excess parts from this machine. I was looking at ways to hook this up to a wall like using command strips and I realized that none of them have a weight limit over about five pounds. This typewriter is in that like eight pound range. Now it's still pretty hefty, but I wanted to remove some of the unnecessary pieces from the typewriter, the, the parts machine, it's no longer really a typewriter. I wanted to remove those unnecessary pieces that I could also use on other projects. Things like springs, I always need springs for things. So I removed a lot of the springs off of this typewriter. I also removed any levers or additional pieces that might be helpful to other parts people out there. So if you needed a part for a typewriter, I still have it in a bag somewhere. So I removed those pieces from the machine. It also helped with the weight problem a little bit. Now it's obviously still heavy because it's got the basket in it and all the type slugs and it's aluminum on the outside. So it's still kind of heavy, but I'd removed some of those excess pieces to give me a little bit more space. I also removed the platen, the platen knobs, the paper tray where I would have put the light bulb. The light bulb was actually too thick for that area, so I removed the paper tray itself. I also removed the rubber rollers underneath that because I didn't want them to melt. And then I was able to have a little bit more space in that paper tray platen area. So I put it back together, I removed the excess parts, and now I was tasked with putting a light bulb in it. And originally my plan was to put the light bulb in it and fish the base of the light through the platen knob hole on the right side. And this was a great idea, except I didn't measure the platen knob hole on the side of the typewriter or the base of the lamp before trying this. And what I realized immediately is that the base of the lamp is too large for the hole on the side of the carriage where a platen knob would go. So what I ended up doing was I took the platen knob from the left side, which has a little bit more of a tail of metal on it. This would go into the platen. So I took that piece, which I had already removed screws from for somebody else's parts machine, and I fished that through the hole for the platen knob on the right side, and it had that little metal tail sticking out, and then I used hot glue to attach the base of the lamp to the hole on the side where the platen knob was so that it was anchored in some way. It had some sort of anchoring on the outside. It was in there sturdy, but I used hot glue specifically because it's removable. So if I ever need to take something else out of this parts machine, I can still do that and it'll still have that function of being a parts machine while also having a light bulb in it. So I let that hot glue sit overnight. And then what I realized was the lamp itself was just a little bit too heavy for that anchor point on the one side. I needed something to lift up the light bulb on the left side of the machine. So I started going through the process of trying to look at typewriter parts I could use to like shove in there and hopefully keep the light bulb stabilized. I tried ordering hooks or curtain rod holders off of Amazon that would be big enough to kind of hoist up that light bulb. I ordered these ones on Amazon and they're great little hooks and they've got a wrapping around them so it's not metal on metal, but they were not the right size. They were about an inch wide and I thought this light bulb was an inch, but it's not. And I also couldn't find a way to kind of anchor those hooks to the typewriter itself so it was stable and anchored against itself. What I ended up doing was I went to Walmart and I found these picture hangers in the home hook aisle, home decor, home improvement aisle. And what these hooks apparently do is hook heavy pictures to a wall. But what I used them for was I actually fished them through these holes that I had found on the basket where I had removed some pieces. I was able to fish them through. They were thin enough to go through these pieces and then also anchor themselves against the back plate where the paper tray would have been. Now they were a little long, so I did use my wire cutters to cut the excess length off of these picture hangers. And I also used some pliers to bend them a little bit so that they could rest against the light bulb instead of hoist it too far up. So I put in two of these and now the light bulb is a little bit more stabilized. So now I can go from sitting here to hanging on a wall and that light bulb's not gonna fall out of there even though it's held together with hot glue like most of my craft projects. 
So that's how I turned a parts machine into a typewriter lamp. Now I also made sure that I took out the rubber feet pads for the bottom of this machine. So it's got these natural holes in it where you could hook it up to a wall. So it could go from sitting on a table to hanging on a wall and it would be anchored pretty well. There are some considerations that I would make if you're going to do this process yourself. First of all, don't follow this as a tutorial because I got electrocuted during this process. Don't worry, I'm fine, but don't do that. But I would also kind of consider a few things as you're looking at making a typewriter into a lamp. First of all, you're probably gonna get hate from typewriter collectors. I fully expect to get canceled after this video, but I'm really proud of the result and I did wanna share it. The reason I did this was because I wanted to find a way where I could take something that I thought looked cool but I knew was damaging and find a way to do it that was a little bit more sustainable or ethical from a typewriter collector's perspective. That's why I wanted to make sure I found a way to do it where you could take out the light bulb and still use the typewriter and why I used a parts machine specifically. A lot of times parts machines just sit in boxes in pieces as you slowly remove parts from them. They're not on display usually. You don't have them out. You can't use them because you've removed parts from them. So I wanted to find a way to kind of glorify or give this typewriter a new life as a display piece. And I thought that that was a good way to do it. And I also know that I can still remove pieces from this typewriter if I need to. If somebody messages me and says, hey, I still need this part from your Skywriter, I can really easily remove this lamp because it's just hot glue and I can take out that piece. I also have a bag of all the pieces I removed off of them and I removed them in their entirety. I didn't bend anything as I took it out of there. I didn't break anything as I took it out of there. So I still have all the pieces and this can very much still function as a parts machine. I also made sure that I did this in a way where I wasn't going to electrify the whole typewriter, hopefully, or melt anything by using the LED bulb and making sure I had the lamp base properly insulated, which took a few tries and, um, but it works now, so that's good. So those are all considerations I would make as you're looking at maybe possibly turning something into a lamp if you feel like it. If you think this is horrible, I totally understand and um, thank you for watching anyways. <laughs> but you don't have to make a typewriter lamp. I did to show you that there's a way you can do this that's a little bit more ethical from a typewriter collector's perspective. And I really like the way it looks and I'm okay with it. And that's what's the most important thing to me as a typewriter collector. I feel I didn't do anything wrong by using a parts machine and I still got a cool piece of art out of it. If you're interested in other typewriter content where I'm not destroying typewriters, you can check out some of the other videos on this YouTube channel. I also have an Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I wanna thank you all so much for watching. Please don't leave me after this. And I wanna remind you that you're just my type writer. You don't know this, but I recorded this twice without any audio, apparently. So hopefully this one worked because I really don't feel like recording it again.